the final part of this list, we looked at uh, the personal emergency response system service, both the monthly monitoring and the installation testing. The augmented personal care attendant care services, once again, for the frail elderly waiver, this is provider type 57. We saw it on the, the previous slide as a different provider type and a different procedure code. Um, so we did look at both of those. We also looked at the environmental accessibility ad adaptations, home delivered meals, uh, specialized medical equipment and supplies, and then also the assisted living code that is under the physical disabilities waiver. Next, we're going to talk about the cost survey. When we were developing the cost survey, we worked with the division to identify which services needed to be included in the survey. We looked at service definitions, provider qualifications. We did engage stakeholders. We had a meeting back in April of 2023 to talk through, you know, here are the services we're looking at. Here's the information we want to capture. Make sure that we were on the right path asking the right questions. We looked at the rate buildup methodology and identified what components we wanted to include in that methodology. That was important because we wanted to make sure that we got the data that was needed for each component. A good example of that is transportation. Um, if we want to have transportation as a separate component, we need to make sure that you know, maybe we need to get mileage information or, or we need to have specific questions answered that for a specific service. Um, and so we, we want to make those decisions so that we can get the best information possible. We also wanted to identify uh, potential data sources uh, because different data sources can be used and were used in doing our analysis. Um, an example of that is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We look at uh, BLS to compare with cost survey wage data that we get uh, for validation. We also look at BLS and IRS data uh, regarding employee benefits um, so that we can also compare that to cost survey data going forward. That cost survey was uh, developed in Excel um, and was sent out to all providers. This is just a listing of the worksheets that were included in the cost survey. Uh, you can see we had some you know, general questions for providers. Um, each provider was able to select the services that they provide. So the cost report um, or the survey was uh, generated specifically for that organization. We had uh, them give us staffing information, um, talk about the different uh, position titles for administrative staff, program related staff and direct staff, general overall expenses that tied to the trial balance. We asked questions regarding benefits and paid time off. We specifically asked for training information for uh, direct service professionals, turnover information, because that is uh, definitely something that we have heard from the industry. There's a lot of turnover going on right now. We did ask specific questions regarding transportation and medication management. And then there were service specific worksheets for every service that was included in the rate study that had specific questions, whether that was regarding caseload or staffing ratios, uh, but not so much cost and expense driven, but really service delivery. The timing of the cost survey, we did a training back in May of 2023, and then we had two live question and answer sessions at the end of May and mid June. Um, to help people get their, their cost surveys uh, completed and submitted. The submissions were due at the end of June, 2023, and we asked providers to give us their information for their fiscal year ending in 2022.
Unfortunately for the cost survey, we did only receive 33 cost survey submissions, and that is out of approximately 400 providers. So we did not receive a lot of cost surveys. What's shown here is the count of surveys uh, by service. So uh, because some contain more than one service, obviously the sum of this is more than 33. We also have shown the estimated percent of revenues covered. So we ran claims data for 2022. We wanted to look and see, okay, of these uh, surveys that we received, here are the providers that we received, how much of the revenue you know, does that provider make up of a specific service? So you can see for you know, residential habilitation, we only received two surveys, but we did have almost 50% of the revenues. So there aren't actually a lot of providers um, or the, the ones that we received were larger providers. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of a snapshot. Um, you can see we did not receive any surveys for assisted living. Um, for assisted living, and we'll talk, I'll, mention this later on as well, but assisted living is similar um, to the augmented personal care. And so for, um, for that, we kind of combined um, when we looked at those components and used the information that we've received from the augmented personal care cost surveys. Once we received and processed the surveys, we reviewed them for completeness. Uh, some providers did not complete all applicable worksheets. We did ask questions and, and go back to providers if we did have questions. Uh, we compared you know, the expenses to their trial balance or the supporting documentation that we received. Uh, we did look at any errors or irregularities and make corrections and adjustments. We compiled all of that raw data and reviewed it for outliers. And then we calculated averages and medians um, in order to compare and kind of you know, see where, see where everything uh, looked as far as the different components of the methodology. The validation and comparison, we did look, as I mentioned earlier, at some national data, the BLS, IRS, we also looked at the division's policies and decisions that they had either made previously or they were looking to make and use those discussions to make our recommendations. The actual methodology that we are recommending is a, is a rate buildup. And it starts with the cost of direct care labor and builds from there. So that, that top section, the direct care wages and benefits, that's your, your direct service professionals who is doing that, the hands-on service for an individual. And then we look at, you know, what are those direct care employee related taxes and benefits? So, um, health insurance, workers' compensation, payroll taxes, those type of expenses. We also want to include that in the buildup of a rate. Then there are program-related expenses. Program-related expense component is going to include things that are necessary for the, the service delivery, and they can directly be associated with a specific service. And those are things like supervisors of your direct care staff um, and their benefits, the program materials, supplies, uh, direct care and program staff training costs, and then transportation related to services. Each service will have a program related expense component in the methodology. Then we have the administrative overhead, and this is associated with overall operation of your organization. So these expenses aren't something that can be directly attributed to a specific service. It's just an expense that's necessary in order to run your business. There are additional factors included um, in the final rate development. 
one of those that we do is there is a, a productivity component that we'll show um, on the next slide. And that productivity factor takes into account uh, things like paid time off and training hours. We understand that direct service professionals do not, um, they have other things that they need to do during their paid time that isn't necessarily always billable time and um, or not you know, directly associated with the care of the individual. So we account for that in the, the rate buildup methodology. We also look at staffing ratios when we calculate the final rate. We might look at hours of service, particularly with daily service rates. And we'll, we'll see these as we walk through the different service specific methodologies. So here is an example of the rate buildup methodology. You can see here that it does start with that direct service hourly wage. We then add on a component for employee related expenses. The productivity factor that I mentioned a little bit ago is uh, it's right there. So it's multiplied times the wage and employee related expense components. Ultimately, as we get into the service specific methodology, those hourly wage uh, numbers, we, we did use the Bureau of Labor Statistics compared those to the cost surveys, and we are proposing to use those BLS wages, um, and then we applied an inflation factor. So the, the BLS data that was used was based on 2022 data for the state of Nevada, and then an inflation factor was applied, and we'll see that as we walk through the different services. And we'll also show you the BLS occupational codes that were used for each service. For the productivity factor, the paid time off, uh, training hours, those were also uh, questions that we included in the cost surveys. So the component values that you will see for the specific services, we did use a combination of the cost survey data analysis, review of similar services, uh, which we'll discuss, and then also discussions with the division. Once we have the, the DSP wage and benefits, including that productivity factor, which you can see here, $20.69 in the example, we then have those program related expenses. And that is a, a percentage of the DSP wage and benefit. That percentage will be service specific. And then we add in the administration um, expense. And that is a percent of total cost. So that one is a little bit of a, a different calculation. The 13.08, that is consistent um, across the board for all services for the state. The program related expenses, in some cases, we did group similar services together and then applied that percentage to multiple services. Um, and that helped alleviate some impacts of outliers to calculate a median value. So when we add these components all together, we then get to a total cost per hour. In some cases, if it's a 15 minute unit, we'll need to divide that by four. If there's a daily unit, then we need to say, okay, how many hours of service per day is actually occurring for this service? And we'll see that as we go through the service specific methodologies. The overall rate model assumptions, I just mentioned a little bit ago, the general and administrative expenses and that, that expense to, to run your business, the overall operation of the organization. We compile data from the submitted surveys and uh, did not include non-reimbursable expenses. We did not include uh, room and board. And so looking at you know, reimbursable expenses and then calculated 
a percentage of total cost for each provider and then looked at the median. So the cost survey median um, for all of the cost surveys we received is that 13.08%. And like I mentioned, that is being used across all of the services. For employee-related expenses and benefits, this also was taken from the, the cost surveys. So we looked at what were the total payroll tax and benefit expenses from the surveys, calculated that as a percentage of total salaries for each provider, and then looked at the median. And the median came out to 15.05%. And you will see this also applied to all of the services when we go through the methodologies. The other piece of data that we used consistently amongst all services were the paid days off per year. So this includes vacation, sick days, holidays, any days that are the employees are paid or the direct service professionals are paid, but they're not actually providing service. Once again, we looked at the data from the cost surveys. We calculated the median days for each category. So we calculated the median for vacation days. We calculated the median for sick and then for holidays. And then when we added those up, we got 24.44, which was rounded up to 25. But, so we ended up using 25 days um, in the productivity factor calculation. That's where this, this number um, falls in the components but we were consistent and used 25 days across all services. Now we're getting into the service specific proposed methodologies. We do have a disclaimer. Um, all of the proposed rates and methodologies that are presented today are for informational purposes and there is no guarantee that they will be implemented in the future. Any proposed rate increases that are shown would need to be included in a future budget development cycle or initiated as a bill during the legislative session. The division is unable to implement rate changes without legislative approval and additional authority granted to fund the state share of the change in cost. So each of these services that we'll go over, there is going to be an initial uh, slide that just kind of gives an overview of the service. I won't really talk about these slides much. The next one then kind of talks about those components where we do have something that is specific to the service. And then the, the third slide will actually be the rate methodology. So for chore services, we're looking at the BLS occupational code for home health and personal care aides. We do have an inflation percentage of 15.38%, and that is also going to be consistent amongst all of the services. In the productivity factor, along with the 25 PTO days, we also are including an average training hours per year of nine hours. And for tour services, the productive time in a typical week is actually the full 40 hours. For program related expenses, the cost survey median was 15.05%. So when we come over here, we'll see the average hourly wage for the base with inflation is 1443. We add the 15.05% for employee benefits. And then we add the productivity factor. So we add that wage plus the employer related benefits, multiply that times the productivity factor. That actually gives us the DSP wage and benefit total. We then apply the 15.05 program related expense. And I will say, if anyone notes, that the employee related benefits and the program related percentage here is the same. That is a complete coincidence. Um, as we were reviewing, I was like, is that really right? And it is. Um, 
but that percentage is multiplied times the DSP wage and benefits. And then the administration expense percentage, the 13.08, which will also be comparable to all of the other services. That's based on the total cost per hour. The total cost per hour comes out to 2373. And then this is a 15 minute rate. So the proposed rate would be 593, which you can see compared to the current um, is a little over a $2 increase. The next service we'll go over is personal care services. This is for the 1905A, PT30, and PT83. For this service, the BLS composite wage, we actually did a composite of two different occupational codes. So here we're looking at home health and personal care aides. And then also some nursing assistance. And you can see the nursing assistance is, is at a higher wage here. So we did 70% for the home health and personal care aides, 30% for the nursing assistants. Apply that inflation factor. For the productivity factor with the 25 PTO days, nine hours per year for training. And then we do have um, some non billable, non productive time of four hours per week that are included in the productivity factor. And you see here the program related expenses, the cost survey, the median is at 1505. You're going to see that um, throughout the next few services um, because we did combine kind of similar services or kind of services that were done by the same type of staff. So homemaker, chore, companion, respite, you're going to see the, the same uh, cost survey median there for the program related expense. So here we are looking at the T1019 and the T1019TF. Hourly wage is 1652. That's with that composite wage plus inflation. We add the employee related benefits. The productivity factor here we have is 1.235228, which gives us a full DSP wage and benefits of 2348. We add on the program related expense and the admin expense to get a total cost per hour of 2988. So the proposed 15 minute rate of 747. Once again, a couple of dollars higher, or I guess $1 higher. Uh, than the current 15 minute rate of 625. You're going to notice as we go through the next services, um, personal care through respite, um, that they are going to have the same proposed components and they are going to have the same 15 minute rate calculations. This is consistent uh, with the current rates as the current rates for these services are also all the same. And that is also uh, what is being proposed. The next slide for each of these services, we tried to go and look at comparable state uh, rates and methodologies for all of the services in the rate study. The selected surrounding and comparable states that we looked at were Utah, Montana, Oregon, Colorado. Arizona and New Mexico. Each service isn't going to have all of those states. Um, comparing services between states can be kind of difficult because states don't always provide the same or similar service. Every state's different. Um, and they can also have significant differences in worker qualifications and service delivery requirements um, from state to state. So as part of our analysis, we looked at you know, different waivers, service definitions, and procedure codes to try and determine which states had comparable services that we could uh, compare to uh, kind of what we we're looking at for each services and we could compare to Nevada. So you can see for personal care services, the current rate for Nevada is actually the lowest rate of what we found, but the proposed rate would kind of put us Put, put in the middle. So 
we'll have this slide for each of the services where we have comparable information to kind of show you where the proposed rate is landing. The next service is attendant care, and this is specifically for the uh, physical disabilities waiver, PT 58. Once again, the same 70 30 split between home health and nursing assistants, same productivity factor and cost survey median that we saw previously, and the same proposed 15 minute rate, the 747. A comparable state information here also shows that, that the proposed new rate is kind of right in the middle when we looked at some states and we did have some additional states for this service. The next service is homemaker. Once again, we're looking at the 747 compared to the current 625. And for this one, current Nevada is, is at the lowest, pretty close to what Colorado is, but the proposed puts you, puts you up more towards the top. The next service is adult companion. It's going to be the same components and the same rate we just saw, the 747. And for adult companion, the proposed actually is the highest that we saw um, amongst the states that we looked at. For respite rates, once again, we're going to see the, the same components um, that we talked about earlier. There is one difference with the respite. There is a 15 minute rate, but there is also a daily rate. So the same 747 for a 15 minute rate, we take that 747 times four, we get an hourly cost. The daily rate is based on six hours of billable service. So the daily, daily rate times six gives us the 179.28. And you can see that that is a, an increase there from the current daily um, S5151 rate. We had a question in the chat. What category does the frail elderly waiver fall under? I'm not sure that I understand. Um, the frail elderly waiver was just one of the authorities that we were, were looking at, and there's more than one service included in the rate study that is falling under the frail elderly waiver. For respite, the uh, 15 minute rate, uh, the proposed rate is, is the highest compared to the states that we saw. The daily rate is the second highest. Uh, my guess is that that has to do with the number of hours that are being included in the daily rate calculation. Um, or maybe their daily rate isn't, isn't, doesn't actually, isn't based off of the 15 minute rate. In some cases, especially with states that have some older rates, um, that's also a possibility. Our next service is adult daycare. So this would be adult day for the social model. For adult day, the composite wage we're looking at is 80% home health and personal care aides. And then 20% recreational therapists. And you can see the recreational therapist is quite a higher wage than the home health and personal care aides. For the productivity factor, we have the 25 PTO days. We have 25 hours per year of training. And then we have six hours per week of non-productive or non-billable time. 
the cost serving median you'll see is 174.61, so a lot higher than what we've been seeing on the other services. And that is just because of the service um, that adult day is. You have um, facility expense, you actually have food expense because they do have you know lunch and, and snacks provided. Um, so there's just a lot more program related expense for this particular service. There's also assumptions, there's, there's transportation um, that gets included in here that we have for a, a different median. We do have a base staffing ratio that came from the cost survey. So we're looking at a 10 to one staffing ratio. And then for the daily rate, we're looking at six hours per day. So if we come over here, Look at the actual calculation. Our productivity factor is 1.319. We have that transportation percentage that's included. We have the program related expense on top of that. That's also included. You can see the base staffing ratio. So what happens here is we calculate the total cost per hour. But then that gets divided by 10. So we're looking at a total cost per hour per individual. Um, so you'll have, you know, 10 individuals there for the hour. The cost for that is for that full hour, but you're going to divide that by the number of individuals. Then we look at a 15 minute rate of 189 and then the proposed daily rate, which once again was based on the 6 hours per day. And we get the 4536. And then you can see the increase that that is above the current rates. The comparable state information for adult day, still lower even with the, the proposed, and then kind of right in the middle for the daily. So the 15 minute looks low, but the, the daily is kind of right there in the middle. Once again, like I mentioned, it is hard to to know if we really are comparing apples to apples when we look at these other states, but it's at least um, it's at least a look. So this is then for the medical model. The difference here is going to be that the composite now includes LPNs and RNs. So because it's the medical model, you have those medical folks who are helping with the direct care. So we've added 25% of the LPN, and then we do have a small 5% of the registered nurses, um, along with still the recreational therapists and the home health and personal care aides. All of the other components, uh, the productivity factor and the the different uh, percentages are all consistent with what we saw under the social model. Same with the ratio and then the six hours per day. So when we look at the actual calculation, you'll see all of these here are the same, but because that wage is higher, everything else then also becomes higher. So our total cost per hour is actually rounded to 10. The proposed 15 minute rate is 250. And then the proposed daily rate at $60. So once again, an increase over those current rates. Similar to what we saw with the social model for the 15 minute, um, still a little on the low side, but then the daily, we're in the middle. The next service we're looking at is day habilitation under the 1915-I. For this, the BLS occupational code is home health and personal care aids, adding the inflation, productivity factor, 25 hours a year for training, four hours a week of the non-billable, non-productive time, cost survey median of 20.4, a base staffing ratio of one, and then the base staffing service hours for the daily rate of six hours per day. So here you can see we get to a total cost per hour of 2719. The 15 minute rate would be 680. 
and then we do the 680 times four gives us an hourly cost of 2720. So a little bit different, you know, because because of rounding. Um, and then we take that that 2720 multiplied times six, and that's how we get the 16320. And this is where the dehabilitation rates compare. We just had the one state to compare to. For residential habilitation, we're going to see similar numbers here. The wage, the productivity factor, the productive time in a week, um, we only included two hours of the, the non-productive time. The residential habilitation does have a, a daily rate and also has an overnight rate, but we'll see two columns on the next slide. So the T2017 is the daily, and then the UJ modifier is that overnight. You can see right now that the proposed rates are right in line actually with the current rates. And then this is where we compare. So right there in the middle. The next service is the assisted living services. This is under the physical disabilities waiver PT 58. For this, the wages we're looking, we have the home health and personal carries at 50%, with nursing assistance at 40%, and then we have 10% for LPNs. So a little bit higher there pulling in that LPN. With 25 hours per year of training, six hours a week of the non-productive time, the costs are a median of 30.3. If you'll remember correctly, we didn't receive any assisted living cost report. We did for augmented personal care. So, because those services share similar service definition, and after discussions with the division, we use the 30.3 uh, that we saw from the cost surveys for augmented personal care. And then the base staffing service hours here are eight hours per day. So, once again, this is for the physical disabilities waiver. Um, we're looking at a total cost per hour of $40.11. For the base staffing service hours, eight hours a day, the proposed daily rate would be $320.88. This is the comparable. So the current or right in the middle, the proposed were pretty high. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that when we get to the next, the next service, because it all kind of fits together. So the next service is augmented personal care. This is under the frail elderly waiver, PT 57 and PT 59. So augmented personal care has four different levels. So there's four different rates here. So for levels one and two, we actually have the same composite, the same occupational codes, the same percentages. When we get up to the level three, then we actually move more of that percentage to the nursing assistant. So as we get up on those levels, you know, we see more behavioral issues. We see more medical issues as we get up into those levels. And so we've increased those nursing assistants to account for a higher wage as we get to those levels. The other thing that we'll see as we, we look at these rates is that there will be a different uh, number of hours per day. So the, the individuals that are at that level four have a, need a lot more assistance with their ADLs. They need a, a lot more hands-on assistance during the day. So there's more hours per day that go into that rate. For the augmented personal care, we looked at training hours of 25 hours per year, uh, six hours of the non-billable, non-productive time, that cost survey medians, so the 30.3 that we saw under assisted living. And then you have the base staffing service hours. So we looked and we kind of based the assumption off of a certain number of hours per week. 
um, because this service, they might not get the service every day. There were a lot of different kind of variables. So we looked at it and said, okay, what is it per week? And then what's that divided by seven to get those hours per day? So you can see that the hours per day, oh, okay, I'm gonna go back. Uh, like for level two, we, we've got quite the calculation there uh, just because 20 divided by seven was, was not anywhere close to an even number. Um, so that we move that up and then level three at the 4.29, level four at the 5.71 based on the 40 hours a week. So here we're gonna see each of the levels so you can see the hourly wage goes up when we get to the level three and the level four. Your components kind of stay the same as we go, but because of that higher wage, you get some increases as you get to the higher levels. So your total cost per hour goes up. You multiply it times the base something service hours per day that we just saw on the previous slide to get the proposed daily rates. So proposed daily rate for level one, 74.40. The level four is up to 229.03. And then you can see how that compares to the, the current rates. What I wanted to tie back to the assisted living. For the assisted living that we just looked at under the physical disabilities waiver, the total cost per hour is the same as this level four. It's the, the $40.11. The difference is that the base staffing service hours per day were at eight. So the, the feeling was that for the physical disabilities waiver, those individuals are needing more assistance because of their physical disability. And so it was at eight hours per day, but the cost per hour is the same as what we're seeing here at that level four. The other thing I wanted to touch on here is you can see for augmented personal care, under PT 57, it's procedure code S5126. Under PT 59, it's procedure code T2031. Previously, these rates had been the same between the two provider types. Effective January 1, that's no longer the case. Um, increases were made to the PT-59, but not to the PT-57 uh, due to legislative approval. Uh, the other piece is that that level four under the PT-59 also did not get increased. Um, so the current rates that are here are the, the current rates effective January 1. Uh, the, our recommendation going forward would be to get those back aligned um, between the two different provider types and also get that better alignment once you get up to that level four uh, for PT-59. And here's where those augmented personal care rates kind of fall. Uh, the proposed, you know, puts, puts kind of right in the middle of that level four um, up a little bit higher, but um, kind, of, kind of in the middle there. New Mexico, this New Mexico being high, it's actually an outlier due to staffing ratio requirements for the services. Um, so we were able to kind of tell why that's, why that's a lot higher. Next service is case management. Like I mentioned earlier, this is for the private case management rate it's under specialty code 303. We looked at the BLS occupation code for healthcare social workers at the 3191, still including that inflation percentage of 1538. For the productivity factor, we have training hours per year of 40 hours. And then um, non productive, non billable time, actually 10 hours per week for case managers, a, a lot more. Um, driving sometimes necessary for the case managers that's not necessarily billable. And then also a lot of documentation for the case managers. The program related expenses, the cost survey median was 29.03%. And here's the calculation. The proposed 15 minute rate for private case management is 2144. 
compared to the current of 1584. And then here is the state comparison. The next service is the Personal Emergency Response System, or PERS. PERS has two different rates. It has a rate for the installation and testing, and then it has a monthly monitoring rate. So that installation and testing, obviously just once um, as they get the, the initial installation, and then we have the, the monthly um, as they continue to have the service. The BLS occupation code for the installation, we used an ins installation maintenance and repair worker wage, um, and then for monthly monitoring, a composite for public safety telecommunicators, and then customer service representatives. For the productivity factor, we did include an average of 10 hours of training per year. And then for productive time in a typical week, pretty high. We only had the two hours of kind of non-productive time in a week. For the program-related expenses, um, these were medians from a cost survey that we received. See the installation and testing is at 101.01. The monthly monitoring is a lot lower at the 29.16. The difference there is that the installation and testing includes equipment, devices, technology expenses, um, and also postage, a lot of the um, devices are mailed to the individuals. Uh, so there's a lot was a lot of postage expense. Um, so we included those all in the installation and testing, didn't include those in the, the monthly monitoring. So you can see here for installation and testing, we're proposing the rate of $70.40. And then for the monthly monitoring, 4288. And here we have the um, state comparison. So you can see we didn't have a lot of comparison when we looked, but we put it right there in the middle. Next service is home delivered meals. Home delivered meals, uh, we did look at kind of a state and national scan of labor cost per meals. Uh, we did have a cost report and received some other additional information um, from some other providers. Um, the other assumptions that kind of go in there, the food expense um, at 138%, we did that separate from the other program related expenses. Um, and that's at 85.9. Once again, there's a lot of shipping um, costs um, and supplies that go along with packaging the meals and, and getting them shipped. So we're looking at a wage per meal of 264. We add the benefits. We have that program related and food that we just discussed. It comes out to a total cost per meal of 1031 compared to the current rate of $5. It had been a while since home delivered meals had been looked at. Um, so this rate I think has been around for quite a while. And then here is the state comparison. Next is the environmental accessibility adaptations under the physical disabilities waiver. The next two that we're going to look at, these were not done based on a rate methodology. Um, so right now for um, environmental, the, the current uh, I guess rate, the current payment is $3,230 per waiver year. What we did is we did a state, we did that state comparison and kind of looked and said, okay, where are these other states at? What limitations did they put into place? Is it at every five years? Is it in every year? 
is there a lifetime max you can see here with Colorado. Um, and so right now the proposal is that Nevada would move to a $10,000 lifetime maximum for the environmental accessibility adaptations. And also, we're not going to, this is really the, the comparison to those other states because it is so kind of wildly different. Um, so we won't have that, that graph that we've seen of the other services. Next is specialized medical equipment and supplies, also under the physical disabilities waiver. Currently, it is $565 per waiver year. We didn't find a lot of states where we could like see that it was a, a similar service. Uh, we did find a couple. Nevada is proposing going forward to change this to be $1,000 per waiver year. In the next few slides, once you get the slide deck, um, these last few slides just walk through each of the services. What is the current rate effective January 1? And then what is the proposed rate so that you kind of have it all in one spot? You can see the augmented personal care, the T2031, the different levels here. And then over here, you have the S5126. And then one more here that will have the environmental, the specialized medical equipment, meals, and then that assisted living um, daily rate under the physical disabilities waiver. And thank you all for sitting through this. It's a lot of information to go through. We ask that you send any questions or feedback um, after today to the email that's on your screen. It's rates at dhcfp.nv.gov. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, we have recorded the webinar and that recording and the slide deck will be available for download. That link has also been placed in the chat um, so you can see it. And I think Kayla did it at the beginning, but she also did it um, just like 12 minutes ago. Um, put that in the, the chat again if you wanted to copy that link somewhere. We did have a question for the outcome of this study. What do we expect with regards to implementation? I'm going to kind of take us back to that disclaimer. Um, that we had earlier, um, the state will kind of look at, you know, fiscal impact of the different services. Um, what can current be done with current funding um, and what would need to have additional funding. Um, so everything right now is just kind of informational um, and proposed. And any implementation. Um, would need to be decided on through through the proper channels and legislative approval. We will keep this open for a couple more minutes. If anybody has any questions that they do want to put in the chat. Uh, the question, were these proposals already submitted to the division? Yes, we have been in um, discussions with the division. Uh, well, really, the, the process has been over the last year, but we have we've talked through the methodology, each of the components um, with the division, got their feedback and got their input um, before the, the final recommendations were made.
when can we expect an approval or denial? I am not actually sure about timing of that. I know we were going to have some people from the division on, um, but that might be a good question to email in to that rates at dhcfp.nv.gov. Hello, for the medical model adult day, if you assess the expenses were over 170, how did you justify a 250 increase? I apologize. I'm going to like quickly go through the slides so you guys are going to see a lot of changes, but let me go back to. So we have the proposed 15 minute rate at $2.50. The current 15 minute rate is $2.38. So once we got to that total cost per hour, we then had to divide it, or we divided it by the base staffing ratio of the, the 1 to 10 to get the total cost per hour of $10. So there isn't a two dollar and fifty cent. I guess there's a two dollar and fifty cent increase, or in the daily, but that's just because it's multiplying it times the hours. Let me go back. I don't know if that helps the clarification that the, the proposed rates, the 250 compared to the 238. Yeah, that program related expense of the 175%, it, it did add on quite a bit of cost to the cost per hour. Does operators see this increasing from fifty-seven twenty to sixty dollars per day for six hours of care? Our expenses are so much higher than that. Okay, so we will compile the, the feedback to give to the division, so they will see these comments. And that's the other piece as well. If there, you know, if you have any feedback, any concerns. Um, that email that we talked about, the rates, um, you know, send, send that feedback and, and those concerns um, kind of with some specifics, um, and that can help the state move forward. As a provider, as a provider for PT 39, I must admit, I'm a bit disappointed on the proposed rent increase of 12 cents for 15 minutes. After 21 years as a provider, they've only been a rate adjustment twice. Each adjustment has been a huge disappointment. I'm sorry to hear that. But we'll get that compiled. With the rest of the feedback. Mm -hmm.
this study is based on last year's cost upon presentation. Do you adjust for this in coming years? So um, part of because of the the rate buildup methodology, and we do include that inflation. Even though the inflation is applied specifically to the wage, it does have an impact as you work through the methodology because we're looking at a percentage of the wage plus inflation or a percentage of certain things. Um, so when we do include, we have that uh, 15.38. Yeah, the 15.38% inflation. It, it does kind of work its way through the methodology. Okay. Yeah, and we will, um, we'll let the state know and kind of maybe talk through the concerns about the adult day and adult day health specifically that we're seeing in the comments. The slide deck will be placed um, out on on a website. The link was placed in the chat um, about 15 minutes ago, and I will also sorry for all of the. Um, it will be out um, at the Myers and Stopper website, uh, the client portal, and then there's a Nevada page. Uh, the name of the slide deck, um, it, it says final NVHCBS stakeholder meeting. Um, it'll have today's date in the title as well. It, it will be, it probably won't be until tomorrow that that gets uploaded. Um, there are certain times of day that um, files that we can load files onto the website. And that has already passed for today. We are in the central time zone. So we're a couple of hours ahead of you of, of where you're at right now. Um, so we, the recording, it will be ready to go and then the slide deck. So they won't be out there until tomorrow at this point. Yeah. Um, and it should be, I think. I think in the morning it is 9 a.m. Central Time, so 7 a.m. your time, um, that it will get loaded tomorrow, but it will be tomorrow morning. I'm going to stay on for a few more minutes just in case anyone has anything additional. Like I said, we are compiling all of the, the comments uh, that we will provide to, to the state. Uh, any other additional feedback, please send it to that rates at dhcsp.nv.gov. Thank you all very much for attending today. It's greatly appreciated. I'm going to do a bunch of slides again. We did have a question earlier kind of about implementation and all of that. So I did want to reiterate again that I have all of the information that we have here was really for informational purposes and there there's there's no guarantee of implementation in the future. 
um, any increases or any changes would need to be included in budget development um, and get legislative approval in order to happen. All right, it's actually been a few minutes since we had any additional feedback. So we will go ahead and close out the presentation. Thank you all for attending. And um, once again, if you have any feedback, please send it to that rates email address. And we will have the presentation um, and the slide deck out on uh, the website tomorrow morning. Thank you all for attending. Have a great evening.